Do the order of columns in an index matter? We're gonna find that out today, but first... Let's quickly review what an index actually is. See these stack of pages? Each of these pages contains information about a particular type of bird, a bird field guide, if you will. You can think of each of these pages as a row of data containing things like bird name, description, pictures, and so on. The collection of all these pages together make up a table. Right now, the Blue Jay page is on top, but since it's not guaranteed, you know, if this gets put in somewhere else, shuffled in there, you know, over time, uh, if I want to find that Blue Jay page again, I don't really know where it is in the stack. Not having a defined order on my table makes searching for individual pieces of data really difficult. To do so, I have to physically shuffle through each page, checking it to see if it's the one I need. I find my first page of Blue Jay a few pages down, but is this the only page with Blue Jay on it? I have no way of knowing if this is the only Blue Jay page in my book. There's no uniqueness defined or anything like that. So in order to be really sure there's no other Blue Jay pages, I have to go through this entire stack one at a time, checking for any more Blue Jays. Having to do this process every single time I need to find a piece of data is painful. What I could do instead is enforce an order on my data by creating a clustered index. For my book, basically that means I'm going to bind it. In this case, my bound book now has all the bird pages sorted by bird name. It still has all of the same data, the descriptions, the mating rituals, the habitat, but my pages are now in a sorted order, making it easy to look up a bird by its name. For example, if I want to find Blue Jay now, instead of having to search through every page in my book, I could just simply navigate to the B's, then the L, U, until I find Blue Jay, and then I know that's it. If I go past that, and now we're at Cardinals, well, I know there's no more Blue Jays in my book, I don't need to keep scanning through the rest of the pages to find any more data that I'm looking for. So a clustered index is really just our data stored in a certain order. But this clustered index is really heavy. It contains all the information I could ever want to know about birds, but I don't necessarily need all that information all the time. If I ever do need it, I can always come back to this. What I really want for you know most of my queries is something lighter weight that just contains the most necessary and essential data that I need to look up. In that case, what I can do is create a non-clustered index. This non-clustered index is actually just an identical copy of my clustered index, uh, but it has less pieces of data in it. So imagine I went to Kinko's, I copied this whole book, and then I went through, cut out all the information I don't need, kept all the things I did want, and put them together into this smaller, much lighter weight guide. Now this non-clustered index is still ordered by bird name, which we call our key column in our index, making it really easy to look up birds if we know their particular name, if we're doing some research. The other pieces of information that are on that index, like the description and any pictures or maybe the color of that bird, um, but aren't in a sorted order, those are called included columns. So those are the pieces of information that we can actually read from this index. If we need to find other pieces of information like habitats or migration patterns, we'd have to go back to our clustered index to look those up. But there is a problem with this index though. It works great when I'm sitting on the couch and researching birds that I already know the names of, but it doesn't work as well when I'm out in the field and I see a bird that I don't know the name of. Is that a oh, ring-billed gull? No. A laughing gull? No. A herring gull? No. A caspian gull? No. This index is sorted on bird name, so if there's a bird I don't know, I'm gonna be stuck scanning through each page, one page at a time, looking until I find the bird that I want. There's no quick way for me to access that bird's information without going page by page. So what could I do in this case? Well, we can make another index, of course. This new index is an exact copy of the data from our clustered index again, with fewer columns, because we don't need all that, all that information all the time. But the key difference here is, is that our key columns are first ordered by the color of the bird, and then by the bird name. Having this index key be ordered on color first makes looking up birds that I'm unfamiliar with much easier. All right, let's take a look at the color. It's, it's white, so if we just, oh, it's an egret. I can just navigate and find the rough color of a bird, and then I can look through each page one at a time to find the bird that I need. It makes the process of identifying unknown birds 
much quicker. So back to my original question, does the order of columns in an index matter? By this point, I think we've discovered that the answer is yes, at least for the key columns of an index. For my query in the field, where I'm trying to find an unidentified bird, having an index where the birds are ordered by bird name doesn't help me at all. What it does help me is another index that's ordered by color, allowing me quickly to look up the small subset of birds that are that particular color and then go through those pages one at a time until I find the bird that I want to identify. That first non-clustered index, or even the clustered index itself that's sorted on bird name, is no help at all. As for our included columns, they don't really make a difference uh, because I'm never using them to look up the certain page of information that I need. All that information is just ancillary and is there uh, included on my page, so I have it readily available. I don't need to go back to my clustered index to look it up, but the order of those included columns simply doesn't matter. So I hope you enjoyed today's index expedition. If you're not a subscriber yet, press that subscribe button so you never miss a video, and I will see you next time. Thanks.